And you're going to see these rhetorical questions all through the prophets, all through the minor prophets. They, Job asks those type of questions. Who is like you? And if you think it through, apart from the Bible, you will always come back to the same conclusion. That there is one God and that he is represented in this Bible. And there are no other gods. Okay? Who is like you? Rhetorical questions. Nobody. Okay. Thou stretched out thy right hand, the earth swallowed them. Thou in thy mercy hast led forth the people which thou hast redeemed. Thou hast guided them in thy strength unto the holy habitation. Okay. Now, this is, they are not at the holy habitation yet, are they? They're standing on the shore of the sea looking back at what happened. This is looking forward they were redeemed and they know that they are going to go to the promised land now. But this is a, a microcosm or a picture of the harvest of the saved people of the world. The people whom you have redeemed. What is Christ Jesus known as? He is known as the Redeemer. Redeemer. He is our Redeemer. Go to the Episcopal Church downtown. The Church of the Redeemer. The people whom you have redeemed, you have guided them in your strength to your holy habitation. This is looking forward to the final redemption of mankind when we are reconciled to God forever living in His presence in heaven. Okay, but this is, as I said, everything we read now is simply a picture of the greater work of Jesus. Okay, God is giving us types and pictures in the Old Testament. As Here's a good way to remember, some of you have probably heard this before, but Jesus is concealed in the Old Testament he is revealed in the New Testament. God is making pictures of what He will do through the people of Israel. Okay? The people shall hear and be afraid. Sorrow shall take hold on the inhabitants of Palestine. Then the dukes of Igam shall be amazed. The mighty men of Moab trembling shall take hold upon them and the inhabitants of Canaan shall melt away. Okay, that is telling you Philistia is right now where the Gaza Strip is. Same people are there to this day. Then he talks about Edom, which is south by the Red Sea, okay? And then he says Moab, and Moab and then Edom, I think. Maybe it's Edom and then Moab. Anyway, right on the other side of the Dead Sea, okay, in the land of Jordan today, and then it says the inhabitants of Canaan, the people in the land, okay? They are going to be afraid because God has promised this land to us. Okay? Now, here's a question. Did all of the inhabitants of uh, Canaan, we'll take for example, all the inhabitants of Canaan, were they all destroyed? No. Okay, can you name one that wasn't destroyed? Just name one. Maybe a pretty girl had an inn of her own. Oh, Rahab. Rahab the harlot, okay? Right? Why was Rahab, and others weren't too, but why was Rahab the harlot not destroyed? Because she helped the spies. Okay. And she said, we know that your God, she accepted their God as... Okay. She had faith in him. Right. She had faith. Hebrews 11. By faith, the harlot Rahab. Okay? She demonstrated exactly what God is asking. The other people didn't. They heard, and they even acknowledged this. She says, all of our people are trembling in fear because they have heard about what the Lord did to the Egyptians. They knew they had a choice. God, if they said, we want to be a part of your covenant community, would God have rejected that? No, absolutely not. What about another pretty girl moved from the land of Moab? Come on, Ruth, same thing. Brought into the fold because she said, my God will be, your God will be my God. Your people will be my people. God will never reject somebody who by faith says, I want to be a part of what you are doing. He will never do it. So God is vindicated. They knew in advance and they decided we're going to go to battle against these people instead. Okay, there you go. So that's just, uh, we're, we're, we're getting there. Verse 16. Fear and dread shall fall upon them. By the greatness of thine arm, they shall be as still as a stone. And that did happen. We'll see that in the years ahead. Till thy people pass over, O Lord, till the people pass over, which thou hast purchased. And Jesus is the one that purchased us. That same terminology is used in the New Testament. He purchased us how? By his 
by his blood. By his blood, we have been purchased from who? Satan. From Satan. And the Bible makes it absolutely clear there are only one of two, two leaders in our life. It's either the devil or it's Satan. What is that, 1 John 5, 13, I think, where he says, the reason that the Son of Man was made manifest was to destroy the works of the devil. It's right there. The devil is, in it. Jesus never questioned the devil when the devil says, all of this has been given to me and I can do whatever I want with it. Jesus didn't debate him. Yes, this is yours. You prevailed over Adam and everything here is yours, but I'm going to prevail over you. And he did. So, same terminology. He is the one that purchased us by his own blood. Go ahead. Thou shalt bring them in and plant them in the mountain of thine inheritance. In place, O Lord, which thou hast made for thee to dwell in, in the sanctuary, O Lord, which thy hands have established. The Lord shall reign forever and ever. Amen. Let's close there today. Verse 18, the Lord shall reign forever and ever. I mean, it's so exciting. It is so exciting to see how all of these things that happened in the past are what he does in every individual heart that is willing to just say, I can't save myself. I can't do it and I want you to save me. And he promises a new body without backaches. He promises eternal joy without troubles, without every tear will be wiped away, walking on streets of gold. All of the promises, I believe them 100%. There is not one promise in this book that I don't believe. It doesn't mean I always have faith that, you know, but hey, I'm just so excited reading this and to see how this picture back then is fulfilled in each one of us when we call on Jesus. Let's say a prayer and close. 